We get a lot of questions about hardness. Specifically, is third wave water hard and will it scale my machine? So third wave water is in fact hard water. If you perform a hardness titration test at home, it may look no different than your tap water, but third wave water is a lot different. To understand this a bit, we are going to have to have a look into the differences between permanent hardness and temporary hardness. Temporary hardness is the hardness that you most likely have coming out of your faucet at home. It's caused by calcium bicarbonate or limestone. This hardness is temporary because it comes out of solution when either the water gets really cold or hot. If you've ever seen floating particles in your ice water or hard water scales, these are bits of calcium that are no longer dissolved in your water. There's another type of hardness called permanent hardness. This hardness stays in solution as the temperature changes and will not cause lime scale. It may leave water spots like regular water, but these spots will easily dissolve in water or wipe away with a rag. Today we set up a little experiment to show the differences between the two. In each of these beakers, we have approximately 100 milliliters of each solution and uh, they're each at around the same TDS. We have really hard water here in Ohio, so it's, a great, uh, it's great for showing the effects of temporary hardness. We heated each of these beakers up and boiled off some of the water, and we're gonna show the differences and kind of what happens to the temporary hardness, the tap water, and what happens to the permanent hardness in the third wave water. Okay, if we look at the results here, the both of them we started off at uh, 100 milliliters. The tap water had a TDS of 382, which ends up being about, or ends up being 38.2 um, total weight in, in milligrams of minerals other than water. We, uh, when we heated it up and boiled it off, we boiled off about 25 milliliters. So we had left. Um, 75 milliliters and the total TDS after that was 390 TDS or milligrams per liter. So when we do the calculations there, the resulting uh, total weight is 29.25. So in solution, dissolved we started off with 38.2 and after we heated it up uh, it caused some of the calcium to precipitate out of solution and the final amount of calcium in solution was 29.25 so we have a good bit missing there about 25 percent and that can be seen floating on top of the water um, undissolved so we kind of had a a, a a little pool of calcium that's visible um, on top of the water. So now we go over to third wave water and we started off at 100 milliliters. We, um, the, the TDS of this was 386, so that's 38.6. Um, again, TDS, uh, parts per million and milligrams per liter are all the same. So we ended up with 70 milliliters. So we we boiled off a little more water than we did on the other one. I let it go a little, a little bit longer. The resulting TDS was 549. Now, the equipment that I was using today isn't ISO 9000. It's not, it's not incredibly accurate for an actual scientific study, but for, for quick um, little understanding, these work out well. So with the uh, end of 549 TDS at 70 milliliters, that ends up equaling 38.43 and if you see it's pretty much what we started with so the small discrepancy is probably from uh, this calibration of the equipment we're using some of the minerals might have got attached or, or at least stuck onto the side of the glass now they aren't going to stick there forever like calcium um, or like lime scale would so they would easily wipe off or get um, redissolved once some more water hit them, but you can easily see here the difference. Both of these waters are hard. Both show the same hardness, the same TDS, but they act completely differently when they're heated up. One loses calcium, this one, and that calcium gets attached to your equipment and forms lime scale and 
this over here, the permanent hardness, it doesn't. It stays in solution and it keeps your equipment nice and shiny.